Section 11.7, Strategy for Testing Series. So we have a bunch of tests now that we can use to see if a series is convergent or divergent. Let's take a look at a few examples and see which test would be most appropriate for each series. For our first series, we have n minus 1 over 2n plus 1. So it looks like as we go towards infinity, the dominant terms should be n over 2n. And uh, those both grow pretty large, so we can kind of think of the n's as canceling and uh, this limit of n minus 1 over 2n plus 1 going to a half. We could even verify that by dividing the numerator and denominator by n and seeing that we're going to be left with um, 1 over 2 and then a minus 1 over n and a plus 1 over n term which both go to 0. So right off the bat we see that a n tends to 1 half which is not 0 as n tends to infinity. So that implies that we should use the uh, test for divergence. So whenever you can see at a glance that a uh, series has a sequence that uh, does not go to zero, then you can immediately just test for divergence and move on. Okay, how about the, the series over here? Notice it's a little bit complicated and it's algebraic. It looks like it's dominated by this n cubed term and this n cubed term over here. So it seems like we should do some sort of comparison test. It's not immediately obvious whether it's going to be greater or less than some other function. So how about we just use the limit comparison test. We can let bn equal the cube root of n cubed over 3n cubed by just looking at our dominant terms. and we get n to the 3 over 2 over 3n cubed, which is the same as 1 over 3n to the 3 over 2. So using the limit comparison test and taking this thing and dividing by this thing, looks like we should be good. So looking at uh, the candidate for bn, we see that we should use the limit comparison test. How about this sum n e to the minus n squared? Well, it looks like we could integrate that if we consider it a function of x, x e to the minus x squared, because we would just uh, take a u substitution, let u equal minus x squared, and then du is minus 2x dx, and then there's an x right over here, so we've got x dx we can replace, we just throw in a ha minus a half. So that's an easy integral. Whenever you have an easy integral, it's, well, not always, but it's very often a good idea to use the integral test. I mean, you could also use the ratio test for this one, but integral test looks like a good candidate. Notice in this next problem, we have a minus 1 to the n. So the series is alternating. So it looks like we should try the alternating series test. So let's use uh, that one. Notice that when it boils down to it, there really aren't a ton of tests. Like for the next one, we've got 2 to the k over k factorial. None of the other tests really deal with factorials very well. You can't really come up with matching functions to integrate. This series is not alternating. There's um, nothing to really compare it to off the top of our heads because we usually compare it to geometric or p-series. So when we see k factorial, our gut instinct should be to use the ratio test. And if we saw uh, an nth root, then our instinct would be to use the root test. Okay, notice for this series we have uh, 1 over 3 to the n right over there, which is geometric. So there's an easy comparison. 
1 over 2 plus 3 to the n is smaller than 1 over 3 to the n because it has a bigger denominator. It's smaller than a geometric series that we know converges because 1 third is uh, smaller than 1. So we should use the comparison test.